Hello everyone. Good afternoon. It is Drama Free Friday once again. Welcome, welcome. I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, Melissa. Nice to have you join me. Hi, Dorothy. Hello, Kiera, right? Kiera. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Linda. Hi, Judith. Judy. Judy, did you get happy mail from me? I hope you did. Hi, Marion. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Muriel. Hello, Michelle. Michelle's hiding. Hi, um, Orla and Tunder. I got it. Kiera. Good. I'm going to try to remember. I have it written down. Hi, Vicki. Good to see you. Hi, Petka. Light and laughter. Hi, Erin. Light and laughter. Do I have your name? I don't think so. Light and laughter. If you want to tell me your name, I'll add it to my list, but it's totally up to you. Hello, Magdalena. Nice to have you here, each and every one of you. Hi, Lori. Sylvia. Okay. Oh, I do have it. I wrote it down last time. I just saw it. Duh. Sorry, Sylvia. I gotta make myself a new list. I've started, see, I've started my list, now I've started turning it and writing it across, you know, wonky angles. No wonder I can't find them. <laughs> Hi, Kasha. Hey, Zandra, nice to see you. So, how's everybody doing today? I hope you're having a good drama free Friday. I hope you are. Hi, Ann. All right, let me just reorganize just a smidgen here. I have so much stuff on my table. It's going to be miraculous if I can sort myself out. Not yet. I see genuine snails. Well, it's been gone for several weeks. I hope it I hope it arrives. Uh Hello, Cindy. Aaron's not doing anything exciting. Yeah. Annette forgot it was Friday. How could you forget? Hi, Scotty. Um, I'm going to call you Scotty, but you can correct me if that's not correct. Hello, Jan Lurkin. We've got a couple lurkers here today. I'm really glad you're all here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I think we're going to have fun today. We're just going to play. Yeah, we're just going to play. But first... A few illegal fluids to inspire you. <laughs> Scotty, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I agree, Sylvia. How can you forget it's Friday? Especially Drama Free Friday. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, I understand those long weeks where one day feels like a few days. Mm hmm. So I'm just getting everybody a chance to get sorted out and get lunch or get something to drink or whatever. And uh, I have a fan going because it's a little warm here today. So if the fan noise starts to get obnoxious, I'll turn it off. <sighs> yes. Oh, Scotty, I hope you get well soon. Hi, Ina. Good to see you. Hi, Janice. Oh, Friday for a Friday of a long weekend for some people. Oh, that's cool. You must be in Canada, huh? Magdalena, did yours arrive yet? Hello, Bella nailed it. Bella nailed it. Do I have a name for you? Don't think so. Anyway, anybody that wants to give me a name to call them other than your screen name, you're welcome to do that. <sighs> yeah, thanks, Melissa. She asked you guys to hit the thumbs up. That would be great. <laughs> Dorothy has the heat on because it's cold and wet there. Woo! Ah. Hi, Rowesta. Hi, Pavla. Nice to see you from the Czech Republic. Hi, Hayes. 
Oh, you told me last Friday? Last Friday, let me tell you, I was I was in another world, so I didn't remember it. Sharon, okay. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> last Friday was kind of a blur. There was so much going on. Ah, yeah, yeah, over there it's been cold and then suddenly very hot. Yeah, when the temperature switches like that, it is, it is really, does take the tuck right out of you. <clears throat> oh, Judy's Mail says uh, their, their postal service hired special snails. <laughs> <laughs> I can call you Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. I can call you Cindy. <laughs> You and Linda McAllister are my two troublemakers, I'm telling you. I ask people to spell their name out phonetically so I'd get it right, and Linda McAllister goes, Linda. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I was a tad distracted last Friday. There was so much going on. <laughs> yeah, then who's Bella and what did she nail? Exactly. Hi, Pamela. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Pablo's already tired of the heat and it's not even June yet. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Is too, Linda. <laughs> okay, let's get started. I usually just chat for a couple, oh, maybe five or ten minutes, sometimes even fifteen. When we get uh, when I come on the air, just so it gives everybody a chance to kind of come in and <clears throat> and uh, you know get settled in and so forth. So if you're a little bit past two o'clock Eastern time, it doesn't matter because we don't start right on the nose. Now if I'm doing a class, a live class or something, I try to start those right on time. But anyway, okay. So, last week, in case any of you weren't here, it arrived on the 5th. Okay, cool. Thanks, Magdalena. I'm glad it arrived there. Uh, let's see. Last week, in case you weren't here, Seth Apter was here for a creative chat with me. And so I want to thank him again because he was a great guest and the technology and everything worked perfectly, which is always excellent. So anyway, Seth, if you happen to be watching at some point, uh, I just really appreciate you being here with us again. So let me get rid of something here. Okay, here we go. All right, we're back. Um, yeah, so that was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you didn't, if you weren't here and you didn't have a chance to watch that creative chat, I really hope that you can go back and watch it he is about the first hour of the show last week on the 12th of may so and then after that i showed you one of his techniques that he gave me permission to show you um yeah hi barbara he was great he really was oh, i'm glad you guys enjoyed it hi bunny Good. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. He was uh, just as he was. He was just not only was he nice, uh, a nice human, <laughs> shall we say, a nice man. He just a nice. Uh, you know, if you look under nice in the dictionary, it's probably going to have his name. I'm just saying. But he was easy to work with, which is great. You know, that's uh, sometimes the technology is challenging and we have a, you know, a glitch here or there we have to work through. And he was, he was great. Everything just worked so easily. So I really appreciate that. And on top of that, getting to hear about his new products he has coming out and also about the products he currently has with different companies, I thought it was just really fun to listen to that, to to understand more about the paint colors he chooses. My favorite one of all the paints that he talked about was the color mud, because he said everybody's afraid to make mud, so he made a color called mud. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> hi, Gail. Hi, Stephen. Um, 
Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Vicki. And Pablo says Seth is really a wonderful teacher. I know Pablo's had a class with him in person. I know that Xandra's had a class with him in person. She has always said the same thing. She's had more than one class with him. Um, Stephen wishes Seth would put more things on his YouTube channel because he loves his ideas. I agree with that. I have a feeling that he is so completely... Uh, busy that that's probably way down his list of priorities. I'm just guessing. I don't know that, but I'm just guessing. Because we, hi Scooby. Um, oh, too bad. Too bad. Sylvia said she had to go see a Shakespeare production. <laughs> it wasn't all that great. <laughs> hi Tam. Tammy. Dorothy bought some of his limited edition chalk paints. Yeah. Hi, Anna Maria. Yeah, I have not bought any of his paints yet, but I want to. Uh-oh, watch out. Race Owen is in the house. I just see the three monkeys coming in. Sneaking in. So I'm anxious to get some of his paints, too, because I have never worked with... Um, with his, I've never worked with any of the paper artsy paints, but I the thing that really attracts me to them is any pen will write over them, and it won't ruin them. That's that's really that speaks very highly of that formulation. So anyway, I just wanted to you know take that moment to thank Seth for um, coming on the show, and also I thank heartily thank Ray since he just popped in for working out all the bugs with technology behind the scenes. Uh, because he gets together with us before the show and makes sure that everything's worked out. So it uh, it takes a team to make that happen. And so I just, uh, I appreciate my team. There, there's It's not a big team, <laughs> but nevertheless, I don't do it all by myself. And there's Claus Man. Hello, Claus Man. So if you see the two Owen people in blue. One's a husband, that's Claus Man. The other is Race Man, that's the technical department. Oh goodness, <laughs> Pablo says she has both of his sets of paint. Uh, paid a fortune for them because the security at the airport wanted her to throw them away. <laughs> oh no. So she had to check them in and nearly miss the plane. Oh no. Oh, I'm glad you ended up keeping them. I hope you like them. I hope you enjoyed them. I am Barbara. I am blessed with the team. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that was last week. This week in the mail. Actually, I don't know how long this had been in my mailbox because I hadn't been to the post office box for a couple of, actually a couple of weeks. But I had a lovely surprise and I wanted to show it to you. Um, many of you know that, oh, I've shown it on, on stream here before, that I make it very seldom, but once in a while I get to make dolls that I call soul support dolls. And um, you don't forget the sponsors. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, and this Scotty is a girl. Got it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I make the soul support dolls and you can actually check back on the YouTube channel. You can do a search for that and you can actually see some of those that I have done. And, uh, if you go over to the, the how to get creative.com blog and you can search and I think you can find the soul support dolls there as well. Anyway, they're dolls that I make. They're all one of a kind dolls and I do them periodically, like I said, very seldom anymore because I just don't have time to do them. But I do them occasionally for people who have, you know, something going on in their lives that's just like really overwhelming or, um, you know, sometimes it's just one of those things that it just, it just gets in my head or my heart and I can't get rid of the thought. Uh, the, about someone and so I will make one of the dolls and send to him. Anyway, a, uh, one of my viewers named Linda Green made a doll for me. She calls hers Friendship Dolls and she sent this to me and I want you to see her. She used the stamps that, and this is totally hers, 
other than she used my stamp one of my stamps which I still have some of them they're called fun faces stamps and I still have some of them available very few but there are still some the last stragglers are left here of the stamps but this is the doll that she sent to me she made and sent to me she calls her a friendship doll this is one of the faces and I'll give you a close-up here in a minute and she did a lovely job on her um, against this cruddy mat it's kind of pathetic <laughs> but anyway she is adorable and so she did I'll read you more about her I'm just giving you a, a kind of an overview look of her about her then I'll give you a close-up here in a minute but she's got charms and she's got all kinds of things on her and this is the back side and she has a backpack on her on the back I'll read that to you in a minute but she puts a backpack on her isn't she cute I know she's wonderful she really is wonderful so I'm gonna show her to you up close so you can see her okay so I'm gonna um, kind of read through her note I'm gonna just read bits and pieces of it uh, she says hi Barb just a note quick note to thank you for sharing your dolls with me um, I'm having so much fun and truly love these gals um, they've developed their own personality and it's hard to let them go I understand that completely because every one of them that I make I have uh, you know by the time it's ready for them to go I'm I finally am okay but during the time that they're in the creation process I just have to you know love them and enjoy them totally so this is from Linda Green so if you see her show up in the chat be sure and say something to her uh, she says she's been collecting 15 years worth of laces fibers trinkets beads and fabrics she likes secondhand stores and garage sales for getting some of her supplies this is her first attempt at crazy quilting and I'll tell you I think she did a great job if this is her first attempt at crazy quilting let me tell you she is doing she is on to something here um, let's see she likes watching Sonia Steptoe S-O-N-Y-A S-T-E-P-T-O-E -E on YouTube um, which might be the crazy might be where she does crazy quilting I'm not sure because I didn't check that out she said that this this doll told her that when she grows up she always wants to be a gypsy so this is gypsy rose lee rose is full of mischief and will put a spell of laughter and giggles in your heart hi debbie hi shirley hi bratty patty yeah i think she's wonderful I think she's absolutely delightful um, let's see some of the symbols on Rose have meaning the sparkle everyone the sparkle so she has sparkle up here everyone needs a little sparkle the key so she has a key here and it has a charm on it, it says wish the key is you hold the key to our friendship always a special word the elephant for good luck so there's a good luck elephant down here um, the heart not entirely sure where the heart is there's so many things on here it's so easy to miss oh up here heart the heart is gypsy rosalie heart heart is full of love kindness joy and lots of giggles for you and then she does on the back she creates a backpack where I create a little envelope and in the back I put a little message in mine she put a little message in this one and her message says this is her message that she enclosed 
My name is Gypsy Rose Lee. I put a spell of laughter and giggle on you. I'm filled with love, kindness, joy, and a lot more giggle for you, too. So, isn't... I mean... And then the trim. She's got trim on her. I just think she's, she's great. She is great. Anyway, so... Thank you, Linda, so much. She is absolutely wonderful. I very much appreciate her she has all kinds of fibers and everything for her in her hair for her hair she is and then she has a rose back here in the back isn't she cute delightful thank you linda so that was really special i i uh i was very surprised and delighted okay so that's all of that Hey, Kathy. Okay, we're ready to move on. So this week, we're going to be playing. How's that? That's what we're doing today. We're just playing. And I am not experienced with this tool, although I have to say I really think that I'm going to really enjoy this. Um, but I thought what I would do today is we would play around with wood burning, pyrography, and um, just play with it and see what we can do. And then we're going to work with, play with the scribble sticks from Dina Wakely. So these are new, came out in January. And I've really been enjoying working with them. And I worked with them a number of different times on different kinds of projects. And I really like them because I find them unlike any other pigment stick that I have. And so I'm really enjoying them. So, um, hi, Sandra, Sandy. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So I'll show you the things that I was uh, playing around with. These are just some little scrap pieces of wood and I'm using a couple of wood burning tools. I'm going to go ahead and turn them on, get them heating up while we're chatting here for a minute. And I don't think that I told you, let me go back here for a minute. I don't think that I really introduced myself to you earlier. I just assume you all know who I am. Uh, my name is Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com, and I'm glad you're here. This is Drama Free Friday. That's what we call this show, because for just a little bit, you know, an hour or two, we just suspend all the drama, kick it outside our creative spaces, and just pretend like the world is a perfect, magical place, and we have fun. <laughs> I know. It's very Pollyanna-esque, uh, or burying your head in the sand, but you know, when, every once in a while, you just got to do that just got to do that uh, have I tried them on fabric yet um, I'm trying to think if I did I can't remember whether I did or not Dorothy I did quite a bit of experimenting I'm not sure if I did or not yeah yeah I'm trying to think if I did I don't think I did but anyway so Back to what we were doing. So these are the pieces that I was playing around with and I thought well we'll just kind of deal with uh, some of these ideas and play with them. These have all been done with wood burning tools, craft type wood burning tools. These are not, you can get very expensive wood burning tools. These are not. Um, but this is what I'm working with today and uh, and then we're going to add some staining using the Dina Wakely scribble sticks. We'll talk more about those as we get going. So what I have here, let's see, let's start with this one. What I have here are some little houses and these are houses that uh, Claus Man actually cut out for me and these were uh, different pieces at one point, you know, so I could use them kind of like building blocks. I had him put them together for me and uh, so that's what I've got here. So these are glued together. The top of the house is glued to the bottom of the house. 
otherwise known as the roof and the building. <laughs> and this is another one. And this is another one. And it's a big tall one with a wonky roof on it. So I have them in different shapes and sizes. And so I just think that they'll be fun to uh, fun to work with. So what I did here on this one is I had a stamp because I've used some different techniques on these. This is a stamp that is just an outline stamp and I it came from Stampin' Up. I got it at a garage sale. And so it's just an outline and so I stamped it with coffee, archival ink, and I stamped it three times and then I drew some stems on here. So that's what we've got going on at this moment. And so what we're going to do is I have the tool that I'm using to start with is the Creative Versamark tool. There are links in the chat or in the description box below the video if you want more information about the supplies that I'm using, which are not very many supplies. Bye, Judy. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Josie. And so this is the Creative Versamark tool. And this one that I'm using first, the Creative Versamark tool, comes with a stand and several tips. And it has a temperature control gauge on it. So it's a rheostat type thing. So the higher you go, the more toward the red, the hotter it's going to get. It does have an off switch down here. So when you turn it all the way around, it will go off. And it has it comes with a little stand. I don't know whether I can show that to you. Yeah. So there's a little stand here. And I have it taped down to my table. So when I put the tool down, it's always going to, this collar right here is always going to fit in that little stand. Okay. So that's what I've got going. And I have a piece of junk wood. And what I'm going to do with the junk wood is test the tool to see if it's hot enough. And that looks plenty hot. And the tip that I have in here is, let me get my magazine or my uh, information to tell you what it is and also show you the inspiration for this. This came from the most recent issue of Somerset Studio. So this is Somerset Studio. This issue is the May-June 2017 issue. Okay. So it's this one. And in here there is an article by Michelle Ward called Playing with Fire. And so that was what um, what inspired me to just, just get out the wood-burning stuff and play around with it. So she's given you lots of uh, this this quite honestly scares me a little bit working in the round like that, but you know, that's just not my thing. So But these, you know, when she started showing these houses, I was like, I have some houses. So I'm gonna get those out and play with them. So it's quite a nice article that she has in here about wood burning with uh, designs on the wooden houses and so forth. So anyway, that's where the inspiration came from. Okay, back to this tip. This tip that I have in here right now is called the universal point. So that is what this tip is, the universal point. So this, um, hello Miss Azure Muse Diane. Yeah, she is talented, isn't she? Michelle Ward is something. Does a lot of amazing artwork and other things. The worst part about this particular tool is that this is heavy. And you have to be aware of where that control is. Or it can kind of jerk the tool out of your hand. So you do have to be aware of what that is. And it can fatigue your hand some, somewhat. But this tool, this tip when inserted in the tool, you can do a lot of different things with it. 
and so you just kind of can play around with it and that's what the scrap wood is for here so we're going to switch cameras here and let's see what we can do and i do find that when i'm using this tool that i have to be a little careful because sometimes the um the control which you can't see there sometimes the control as it's um you know as i have it on the table and my arm brushes against it some kind sign the i can talk in a minute sometimes it will i'll accidentally switch the position of this and the you know i'll get it too cool and that kind of stuff so you know you just have to kind of keep an eye on that i mean it's not an expensive tool therefore you have to make some concessions for it if you really enjoy wood burning then um, you can get some amazing tools and you can spend as much for the tips as you do for this entire tool and tips are probably not the right word but okay I've got this a little hot I'm going to turn it down just a little bit so I'm just going to burn the design here now there aren't do-overs in wood burning you know that's one of the things about wood burning that you have to accept that there aren't do-overs So you have to be okay with the results you get and if you make a quote unquote mistake you just have to make um, something out of it so it is not like some of the other things that other art supplies that you have some forgiving qualities about this is not this uh, this is one of those things that you really have to just be okay with whatever you get And of course there are some safety concerns with burning the wood so you want to like I have a fan blowing to blow the smoke away um, if you have any breathing issues whatsoever then this is not a good thing for you to do So when I'm working with this, you can see that I'm constantly turning the wood so that I can pull that tip toward me. And you get used to the different directions that you um, move the tip and some of the different things that the tip, the various tips can do. Now when you get into something like this tight little circle in the middle, you have to take your time and I'm just using the very tip of it and I'm just touching the tip down to the circle just the very tip of it and moving in very slow so I'm not drawing that little tiny circle I'm more like touching the wood burning tip to the wood just briefly okay ah uh, no sure Shelly Sheila no don't do this while using oxygen nope Um, how hard am I pressing it just depends on how hot the tool is and what effect I'm after so like right now I'm pushing about as hard as 
if I were drawing with a pencil or a pen. So it just really depends on the effect that you're after. But the, the cooler the tool is, the, the more, either the slower you're going to have to go or, yeah, I would say the slower you're going to have to go. You really get a feel for it as you go. And I'm going to put this other extra block of wood here so I have something to rest my hand on. I don't know if you can see that. So it just gave me a place to put my hand. Because even as I paint, I often bridge with my other hand, the hand that's not using the paintbrush or the tool. I'm using that hand so I have my hands like this so I'm using it as a bridge so I've got to have something to rest that hand on to have it high enough uh, to be able to support the tool the hand with the tool and if I don't get it exactly on the ink I'm not going to um, worry too much about that. How do you change the tip? I'll show you how to change the tip here in a little bit. Um, I can't show you all the different tips because you have to let the tip, the tool cool. This particular tool, you have to let it cool down or it's really best if you let it cool down to change the tip. I have another tool here that at the moment is cool. And so I'll show you how the tip changes in that one here in a minute. And it's like anything else, the tips do what you decide to have them do. So there are some tips that some people are gonna use you know, for completely different purposes than they were maybe designed for. But you do have to pay attention to what you're doing. Know that this tool is hundreds of degrees hot. So you have to, anytime you're working with something hot, you have to always know where that hot or sharp, you have to know where the tip is or the tool. Okay, so we've got that one done. Now we're ready to go around the center. So again, I'm going to get right up on the tip. I'm going to hold it more straight up. And I'm barely pressing into the surface of the wood because this is a really tight circle. Believe me, there are phenomenal wood burning artists online. The wood makes a lot of difference. Um, you really want your surface to be as smooth as possible. And the less grain, the easier it is. Okay, so now we're going to do this stem of this flower.
Okay, so there's our second little flower. Hey, CB. You're off in La La Land. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go to this one. So I'm going to start over here. And this one I stamped so that it kind of goes off the edge. So I'm not going to get a complete petal here. Maybe here either. I'm not sure. And that's all right. It makes it more interesting. You can spend a lot of money on a wood burner if you enjoy it. It's going to be easier if you do with the more expensive wood burning tool. If you're just wanting to try it out, this is a great way to go about it. It does fatigue your hand, I will tell you that, this tool, because it's heavy. Um, when it has that uh, temperature controller attached to it, it does make your hand tired. So what you want to do is take breaks fairly often to rest your hand. So when we get the rest of this burn, this design, then I'll take a break and I'll show you the other one and kind of how the tips change, interchange and so forth. Hello Krissa! Welcome. Glad to have you here. Krissa is the queen of the emojis <laughs> and icons. So the longer I have this tool on, uh, the I'm turning it down a little bit because it's getting kind of hot in my hand. So I'm controlling, just because I started with one temperature, does not mean that that's the temperature I have to use throughout the whole process. But I see this as um, a drawing tool. And I think that that is a really fun aspect of this, using this. Okay, so we're going to do the center. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to get right up on the tip. Because you need to wait until this cools down to change the tips, um, It's, it behooves you to learn how to use one tip for multiple functions. And I timed it and it takes a full 15 minutes for this tool to get cool enough that you can change out the tips. 15 to 20 minutes we'll say, which is not a big deal. But then it takes another five minutes or so for it to heat up. So changing the tips, you know, does employ some time. Okay. So now let's do this stem. Okay, so there is our little um, 
flowers. We'll put some leaves on it here in a minute. Done with the universal tip. Um, yeah, some soldering irons have a tip that look like that. The one that comes with this, the tip that they use for soldering looks different than that with, that comes with this tool, just so you know. Okay, so the flower, the flower itself was stamped with this stamp. This is an old stamp from Stampin' Up. I got it at a garage sale. I can't tell you what set it's from or anything else, but you could easily draw this. I just stamped it because it was simple. And I stamped it using archival coffee ink just because I thought, well, it's brown. The wood burning is brown, so that's what I do. Hi, Meg. Hi, Linda. I showed the doll. She's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Linda, for sending me Gypsy Rose Lee because she is adorable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. Okay. So let's look at this tool that I have. This one is the less expensive version even less expensive than the Creative Versamark, Versa Tool. And this one is called the Hot Marks Tool. Both of them are made by Walnut Hollow. This is the Creative Hot Marks Tool. I'm assuming this one is still available. I'm not entirely sure. Hi, Mary. So this is the other tool. And this one, the difference between this one and the one I was just using is that this one has, I'm going to have to show it to you over here. This one has an off and on switch only. Okay, this does not have a temperature control. So, um, and I would highly recommend taking a, a permanent marking pen and writing on there off and on. It's, it is engraved or whatever, but you can, unless you catch that in the light, you cannot tell if that's off or on, let me tell you. Anyway, it is off. So this is completely cool. And the tips come out. They unscrew just like this. Okay, so they unscrew. And I have a massive big ashtray <laughs> sitting on my desk, on my space here. And this has all the tips in it. And the reason the tips are in here is because if I take out a tip and it's still warm or if it's hot, I drop it into this and that way it doesn't, there's no chance of it burning anything. So you just take the tip and you just put it in. Get it started. And it just goes in like a, like a screw screws right into the end of the tool. Finger tight, that's all you need is finger tight. And I'm gonna turn this on because we're gonna use it here in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna let it sit on its little stand. We'll talk about the tips here for a second. And I'll show them to you. Okay, so these are the tips that come with the Creative Versa tool. That's the first one I was using. So this is the Universal Point. That's the first one that I used. Okay, so that's the Universal Point. That was the tip that I used to begin with. This is the Flow Point. And I found that I really liked that one a lot. Uh, a Tapered Point. This one to me was too small for what I like to do, so I didn't use that. Um, this was a calligraphy point, a shading point. That's what I just put in the tool. <laughs> I was just reading Chris's note. She says, 
Ever since her childhood, she always used to draw something next to her notes or letters. She can't do that here, so she uses emojis. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so this is the shading point. Um, a transfer point. It comes with a hot knife. A soldering point. So this is the soldering point, CB. Just so you know, that's what they're saying uh, is a soldering point here. It does come from with some lead-free solder. And it also comes with some hot stamping points. So these are decorative points here. So it comes with those. So that particular tool comes with those. And then you can also get extra, um, some extra packets of, of tips. And some of them are going to be repeated from one packet to another. But anyway, that's, that's what it comes with. The other one, on the other hand, I'll show you what it's, it has a little different setup with it. Let's see if I can find the, I don't know if it has pictures of its tips or not. Let's see. Yes, it does. Okay. So the other one, which is the hot marks tool, comes with the hot knife. It comes with a mini flow point. So the other one came with the flow point, which is a, it's the same kind of tip, but it's bigger. It has a um, stencil cutter point, is what they're calling that one. A universal point, which is what I just used. And then it has the transfer point. So it has those tips. It also has the shading point, shading tip. It has a calligraphy point, so you can see there's duplication between the two tools. Then, these are the stamping points that it has. So, it has a flower. Um, I'm not sure what this is. looks like a circle, but I'm not sure what that is. A spiral, a triangle, a heart, a square, an oval, and a star. I, I'm thinking that's a circle, but I'm not sure. It's a little, it's a little dark. So it comes with those stamping tips. And those stamping tips look like look like this. Okay? So those are the stamping tips in the Hot Marks tool. In the other one, they are smaller. So in the Versa tool, this is a this one is a versatile tip. This one is a hot marks tip. So you can see the difference in the size. And if my fingers look a little uh, cruddy, it's because we put some graphite powder in the tool. And so graphite powder is just like you know pencil in a powder ground up pencil. Okay, so that's the difference between the two tools and how you change the points. Okay, let's see if this is hot. So this is the one that, um, this is the hot marks tool. So this is the one that, it's not quite hot. Oh, well, there it goes. And as you use the, the tips, they will cool off. So you you kind of have to experiment with them. Okay, that's hot enough to use. Yeah, it is. It's great for flower petals. Um, that's what I did on, that's how I did these little flowers on this one. It's perfect for that. We're going to use it for a leaf, a leaf type design. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to start right here. And put some little leaves on our, our little flowers. And then we're going to come up here and put some flower or some leaves, but this time I'm going to come out.
further away from the flower. And then I'm going to use the side of the tip and add a stem. Now one of the things that you'll note is that sometimes the tool, sometimes the tips get loose. So it's good to have just a pair of pliers available to um, um, tighten them up. Okay, so let's let's put another one here. Okay, so we've got two little leaflets on that flower. And then I'm just making this up as we go. And if you wanted to, you could probably, if you're tricky, you could probably bend that leaf on around the edge. And you also, um, like that one, I'm going to leave that one kind of sparse and that's going to be on purpose because I'm going to pretend that that's a smaller leaf. Even though it's not, I'm going to pretend And the grain of the wood um, will make your lines jagged and you just have to kind of be okay with that you know because it depends totally on the kind of wood that you're working with and don't be upset with it because it's just the way it is I find very often that people get frustrated with supplies and declare that they don't like them and often it's just simply because they haven't worked with them enough or they don't understand they're they're trying to fight against the supply you know whatever the art supply is they're trying to fight against it rather than work with it work with its strengths If it's a really something really awful, you know, or it just doesn't do what you want it to do, then, yeah, then, you know, just don't use it. Find a different solution. Find a different tool. Okay, so there's our leaves that we've added. And we've added some little stems and you'll see it looks kind of um, dotty right in here that's because you can see the grain the grain of the wood interferes with a smooth line I'm on fire today that's right <laughs> Okay, so now let's play with these flowers just a little bit with the um, petals just a little bit. We'll see what we can do. So this is actually known as a shading tip. All right, so we're going to see if we can shade with it. I don't know if we can or not, but we're going to try it. So let's come in here and see what we can do. So the where the petals attach to the center, um, that would normally be a little bit dark. So let's just see if we can kind of paint with the tip. Now, if you don't like brown, this is probably not um, a creative expression that you're going to enjoy because <laughs> this is all about brown. So 
So I'm just going around the tip or the inner parts of the petals with the tip of this shading tool. And I'm just using the very tippy tip of this shading point to add a little bit of um, interest to the flower petals. I am CB. I'm going to use the Dina Wakely Media Scribble Sticks. So that's what I've used here on this one. And when I was just playing around with this one. And this one. Those are all stained with the scribble sticks. Yeah, brown is the color of coffee and chocolate. It surely is. And tea, too. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And you could certainly stain them with other with other things. The scribble sticks were on my table and so I decided to see what they would do with wood and I really liked I really liked the effect. So that's why I thought we'd do that. Okay, so we have two, two flowers done with a little shading. Okay. Why can't you paint it later? You can do anything you want. Absolutely. You can do anything you want. My attitude about art and creativity is if you can think it up, Give it a try. I want to keep the transparent or the, uh, I want to keep the quality of the wood. So I want to keep the grain and I want to keep the, um, I just want to use a translucent material. And so that's one of the reasons I chose the scribble sticks. Do you have to have scribble sticks? Nope. Are they a lot of fun? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit here just for a second. And I see my other tool should be totally cooled off which it is, so this is completely cool now. So I'm just going to take out the tip like this. And I'm going to replace it with, we're going to use this one, this little teeny tiny flow point. They call it the mini flow point. That's tiny enough. That is, uh, that's hard to get it, make sure you got it screwed in place. Just finger tight. That's why I recommend that you use your fingers first and only use the pliers um, gently. So I'm going to turn the tool back up and we're going to use this little tiny flow point here in just a minute. Okay, so I've turned it on so it can. Uh, get hot. Okay, what else do I want to do on this one? Um, I 
we may add some texture down here at the bottom. Let's see if I still have this one on. Yes, okay. We might add a little bit of texture down here at the bottom of it. So let's see what we can do. So we can get some differing kinds of lines. So just the suggestion of some stems or weeds or grasses. Varying the heights so they don't all march across in a, the same height. Okay, so I've just put a little, some lines at the bottom to suggest some um, grass. And then I'm going to turn that tool off and let it cool. And then we'll see if the other one is heated up yet. Probably not. Probably is not yet. Working with two tools means you got two cords you have to be cognizant of all the time, so. It's not quite hot, so we're gonna we're gonna wait a minute. I've got it cranked up, so we're gonna have to wait just a minute. Okay. Hi Ann. Really glad you, uh, glad to see you. Hi, Patricia. Just catching up on the chat. They could be Black Eyed Susans, Marion says. They could. Is there any tool that Barb doesn't have? Yeah, there's lots of them. <laughs> I'm just checking the chat here. Ah. And how's our boy doing? Hope he's hope he's doing well. And gives um, teaches a young a young man about sewing and fiber. And he sent me a beautiful, one of his beautiful fiber postcards that he did. Okay, we're hot. We're hot. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, just for fun, is I'm going to add some um, centers to my flowers. And the longer you hold the tool, the bigger the dot's going to be. Okay, so I put in some little centers. Can I put a little bee on the roof? Probably, I don't know about a bee, but I'm going to try for a bird. How's that? <laughs> I'm not so great at, uh, let's do this, let's do that. I'm not so great at that, CB. You know that about me. You confuse me with Inkwell. otherwise known as Dee Dee Willingham, in case you don't know who I'm talking about.
Please tell him that I said hello, Anne, when you talk to him. So I'm just basically just drawing with the tool now. It's good and hot. Adding a few more grasses down here. <laughs> I could do most anything. Uh, it just depends on depends on the moment, doesn't it? Okay, so I've got a few little flowers. I'll do a couple more over here. Okay, then we'll do some little stalk-like flowers. Or weeds. They could be weeds. I am just barely touching the surface. I've got the heat cranked cranked up nice and high. So I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit to let it cool off a wee bit. Alright, so we've added a few little weedy things in here or flowers. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and see if I can draw a few more grasses in here, pulling from the bottom. More than anything, I just want a little bit darker. Again, varying heights. Of course, we can add a lot of this with the stains. Okay. So that's what we've got going on so far. Okay, so um, let's see if we can put in a bird. Or I usually put in, if I'm going to put in a bird, I usually put in three birds. So I'm going to practice over here on this junk wood. These are suggestions of birds, people. These are not... If we have any ornithologists in the in the group, um, yeah. Just suggestions of flying birds. Okay, so we have some little birds flying in the flying in the sky. And um, I think we're gonna call that good on this one. 
So let's see. Um, just thinking here for a minute. I think I want to switch tips. So let me um, turn off the heat so it can cool down while we play around with the uh, scribble sticks. So there's our little bird up there. Okay, so let's play with the scribble sticks and put some color on it. The weed is just a plant you didn't invite and typically grows twice as fast. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you for that, Debbie. <laughs> okay, so these are the scribble sticks by Dina Wakely. This is the set. I hope personally that she comes out with a lot more colors because I have found, I really debated about getting these because I have quite a few sets of different um, medium color in stick form. I really debated about these. I finally decided to go ahead and do it and I really like them. I'm glad I bought them. I really like them. Uh, they are unlike any other, any other stick form of pigment that I have. I'm not quite sure how to describe them because they almost feel like a colored pencil but it's a little in some ways it's creamier than a colored pencil. I mean it's just a, a it's very it's it's very different kind of um, it's a very different thing yeah hi Hayes <clears throat> good Debbie I'm glad you're here okay so these are the colors that come in and these relate to her colors of her paints magenta ruby tangerine lemon this is lime. Try to get it to roll around here where you can see it. There's lime. This one is turquoise. This one is night. You can barely see it there. It says night. This one is sky. This one is blackberry and it should be blackberry violet. That's the real name but I guess they didn't have room for violet so it's called blackberry here. This is umber. This one is black and then white. Okay? So those are the scribble sticks. Alright, so this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to use some of the scribble sticks while I wait for the tool to cool down. And we're just going to put some pigment on here. And because it is a stick and because at this point they still have um, they still have points on them I mean, I know you can wear the points down, but I've used them quite a bit and have not worn the points down very much on them. But since they still have a point, I'm going to take advantage of that. And um, I'm just going to color, add some color with the stick. It does not feel like a crayon. There is no wax. So they have not, they have no waxy feel to them. It's just, it's a unique animal. I couldn't figure out when Dina, when I saw Dina do the, her various promos about them, I couldn't figure out why she, you know, didn't have specific words to describe them that I could relate to. Could have been me, of course. Um, until I got them and I'm like, no wonder, they're kind of, they're kind of their own unique thing, you know? And uh, that's, it's kind of fun to have something that's its own unique kind of thing because it's not really like a watercolor. It's not really like a crayon. It's not really like, it's very different than the Distress crayons, you know? So anyway, so I just added some pigment there. And one of the things I like about the container is after you get them out, there's a little ledge inside here. So there's a little ledge right there and it makes it easy to just put them on the ledge. So if you know that you're going to use that one again, it makes it easy to get them back out. So they do activate with water. Hey Josie. Color The flowers look like flocks. Good. Okay, so we're going to, um, I'm going to get the blackberry. 
and I'm going to put a little tiny bit of blackberry in right at the center where it touches the center. I'm not actually coloring the center. I'm just adding a little shading where I burned the shading before. They're pro these are probably closest to watercolor. Um, I did earlier these I did this one I did last night and um, this morning I took a paper towel and I put some water on it and I scrubbed over it and I could still get some of the pigment back off of it so if you wanted to make this permanent you would have to seal it with something so they do great on paper mm -hmm. it, it, Sheila you'll ask how much they cost there's a link in the description box below the video that will give you an idea I think they were about $25 on that link um, it truly depends on where you find them you know because there are going to be like independent stores they're going to cost more uh, Amazon they're going to cost less in um, overseas they're going to cost more so I mean it's really hard to answer that question I'm not trying to to avoid it it's just they're really going to vary from place to place I would say that they're probably going to be between 25 and 30 dollars that would be my guess so this is lime and I'm just going to add a little bit of lime down here And I'm going to put a little bit of lime into these brown leaves. Just tint them a little bit. That's my goal. Tint them a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to use some sky and some turquoise, and I'm going to put, yes, they are water soluble. They're not like gelatos, though. The gelatos are much creamier. Okay, so up here we're just going to put some yellow just to suggest sunlight. There's nothing real about this. <laughs> so just so you know, just so we all agree, there's nothing real about this. So I'm just going to add a little bit of, um, this is sky, so I'm going to put a little sky color here. Yeah, if I were using gelatos, the gelato pigment would go on much, in my experience, the gelato pigment goes on much smoother and a more creamy consistency than uh, the scribble sticks but that's my experience I'm no authority on scribble sticks or gelatos I just thought we should play with them you know why not okay so we have some of that and then I think we should add a little bit of turquoise here and there Well, Marion, they might be. <laughs> I 
So I'm just adding a little turquoise here and there just for something, you know, just to add something, something to it. All right, we may come down here and add some stuff to the, the little flowers down here after a while. I don't know. We'll just see what happens. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm using a water brush to activate the um, pigment. And I have a, a paper towel. That's all I got. Water brush and paper towel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to going to work on the flowers here. So I'm going to just get my water brush going. You could you don't have to use a water brush. You could use a brush that you dip in water. So I'm just going to touch the center of the flowers where I put a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and activate this yellow up here. Now the colors are going to be much more intense uh, when they are first touched with water. and they dry much lighter. So I'm not sure that you can tell that, but this is this is coming up like it might be a little greenish yellow. It's actually a very uh, light colored yellow that I used up here. And in real life that is is much paler than it's showing on the camera. So yeah, not an accurate rendition on my camera here. Okay, then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna activate the flower petals. So what I'm trying to say is that the color, to me, dries lighter than it appears. At this moment, it's going to appear to be much more intense. Bye, Anne. Great to see you. Thanks for stopping in. I like the water brushes because for the most part, as long as they're functioning properly, because <laughs> I have a couple that don't, uh, they're, they have a continuous even feed of water. For something like this, they just, they work really well. Now you can get a really, inex this is the Pentel brand. This is the flat Pentel brand water brush. This is the one that I seem to go back to over and over. Um, there are some very, very inexpensive water brushes and they dispense a ton of, of water. So you really, you know, I think a water brush is one of those things that's worth paying a little bit more money for. Because I think it truly is one of the things that you get, kind of get what you pay for. And you can let these dry and then you can come back over them. You could add more pigment and stuff, but you know, we're just doing quick little fun projects here. And the wood does stay wet for a little bit, so you know, you we won't get the accurate color. Possibly we won't get the accurate color to show on, you know, while I'm broadcasting, but I will take pictures of the finished pieces and put them on the blog and so forth. There is a blog post that is associated with every one of the streams here over at howtogetcreative.com. And so that we most most of the time we have close-up shots that you can enlarge and get real up close and personal to see what I've done and to see the detail because it is hard to capture everything on video. And in case I didn't tell you guys, I appreciate each and every one of you being here today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always nice to have people join me on Drama Free Friday. It's my favorite, favorite day of the week. So there is our little, there's our little flowers. Again, they're a little brighter on camera than they are in real life. They're a little bit like Derwent Inktense pencils, but they have a different, a really different texture. And the Derwent Inktense pencils are going to, it's ink in a pigment form. And so they're going to dry. Uh, once, once the pigment is fully activated, it dries and is permanent. Where this is not completely permanent. 
It's not quite as reactivatable, if there is such a word, as some other pigment sticks that I have. And, but um, it's, I would, they relate to the Derwent Inktense pencils, but they are really, they really are different. So I'm just activating the green. And as you can tell, I'm not being particularly um, picky. about it. You're welcome, Shu. Okay, so we've just kind of got the green, the pink, and the yellow, but you can see the blue in the background is still looking very scribbly. <laughs> CB says, this looks so much better than my Girl Scout wood burnings. <laughs> That's good, CB. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they really are. Um, I I just think they're interesting, and I just decided to try them on the wood just to see what they how they'd behave. And I'm like, ah, I think I like this. Okay, so let's come in here on the blue. Now there's a lot of area on this blue. And this blue, I didn't put down a ton of pigment, and so they're gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna blend in pretty quickly. I guess what made me think about using these is I was watching some uh, some wood burning videos, and a couple of different people were using watercolor on wood to color their wood burnings. And I thought, hmm, I wonder what the scribble sticks would do on there. So that was really where the idea came from. It was because I was inspired by someone else. Imagine that we would be inspired by someone, by each other, or by someone else. Now I am working with a little bit more water out here where I have uh, so much area to cover. So I've squeezed a little bit more water um, because there's, it's a bigger area so I can get away with more water. But this stuff, because it's wood, the wood will soak up the, the, um, the water and the uh, pigment will absorb right into the wood. So it's a little different than working with, you know, working, you know, some other, uh, with some other materials on wood. If you were doing this with paint, you'd have to choose your paint colors or your paint brands, your paint consistency, transparency carefully uh, because the, the, some acrylic paints are really super opaque and so they would cover up the subtleties of the wood burning and so forth. So, Okay, so I'm going to let that sit just a second. I'm going to change the tip out in my wood burner so I can get it heating up again. So give me just a second. I know I'm not on camera, but I'm just changing out the tip here. Because I want to get this heating up again, so I haven't gone anywhere. I'm just not on the camera. <laughs> just haven't gone. Just not on the camera. Okay, tip has changed. Got it heating up again. All is good. Okay. I was hoping I could manage to keep this interesting today because of the cooling and heating of the tips and the tools and so forth. So far it's working out, so thanks for your patience.
Now I noticed that where I stamped with the archival ink that some of that ink bled a little bit into the wood which quite honestly doesn't bother me but it's just something you need to know about. So you can see like right here you can see the archive the uh, yeah the archival ink has bled down into the wood a little bit. I don't mind that but Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is get a little bit more water. The color is very subtle, but I just think it's really pretty. Now, I think you could go back. I haven't tried it, but I think you could let this dry and go back and add a second layer of color if you wanted to. But I haven't played with it, so I can't tell you for certain. Um, okay, so there is what we've got so far. So it's very subtle. The flowers are pretty bright, but the rest of it is pretty subtle. Okay. Now, I'm going to hit this with a little tiny bit of heat gun heat. Because what I want to play with is going around the outer edge to um, uh, to kind of deepen around the outer edge just to see what happens. Okay, and so now what I'm going to pick up is I'm going to go back to the blackberry. I know you can't, you really can't see that very well. It's so dark. Anyway, we're going to go back to that one. And I'm going to put this around the outer edge just because I want to see what it does. Um, actually, I probably should have done night. Change that. Let's go back to night. Because night is a blue. Okay, but you can see how that stained that, uh, I mean, that quickly. And I didn't put very much on there, and it stained it, so. Okay, this is night. This is that real, it's a very dark, almost a navy, navy blue. And I'm just going around the very edge just because I want to see if I can get it to have a little bit, you know, kind of how you, when you do art journaling, you often frame the page with a, go around the edge with ink and frame the page. And I just want to see what it will do, if we can achieve something similar with one of the dark colors of the sticks. But they almost feel like a colored pencil when you put when you lay down the pigment, but and yet it's not really. And I have managed to get um, pigment all over my hands. See? Because my hands are sweaty. But the pains I go through. <laughs> Bye tender, thanks for being here. And then my vision for the edges of the houses is to just paint them with something, you know, some acrylic paint or something. Of course, if you wanted to, you could get all crazy and you could wood burn around the edges and all that 
you know, I probably won't do that, although it would be really fun, it would be really nice. I probably won't do that just because of the time factor, and I don't want to spend... We have some stuff we have to do this weekend, and uh, so my time is a little bit limited here for the next couple of days. Usually, usually the weekend is devoted to getting things finished from the stream, taking the pictures, writing the blog post, and getting the YouTube video live. So, um, but this weekend we've got some stuff we got to do. So, don't have quite as much time. I actually love how the um, blackberry and the night work together right in there that that turned out very pretty that was very serendipity kind of you know that was a very serendipity moment right there didn't know that was going to happen but you know happy accidents and all that that's why you can't always worry about the outcome of things. You just have to be open to what happens. You discover some of the best things. By just allowing things to happen. In fact, let's just do some more of that, shall we? Why not? Let's put a little bit more blackberry here and there. And we need to put a little bit more maybe down here. But you can see my hand is sweaty and as I pick up the stick it is activating in my hand so if your hands are prone to being sweaty just know that can happen And you're going to have certain parts, depending on the grain of the wood, because this is totally unsealed wood, um, you're going to have some aspects, some parts of the wood that are going to grab that pigment and make it darker than others. Like over here, it really grabbed that, and I can't move it anymore because it's penetrated down into the grain of the wood. You just have to be, you know, you have to be okay with things like that. When in doubt, add a little bit more. I could have some serious fun with these on this wood, let me tell you. Okay, so there is that. Now, it looks, I'm going to tell you that this is not quite as brilliant in real life in these spots, but yeah, it's coming together. So it can use a little more work, but we're going to stop on this one. And you could add more colors down here in the weedy bits and stuff, but we're going to stop on that one. Okay. So there's that. So we're going to set that to the side. So there's that one. And we're going to go to a different one. And let's see. I think we'll work on this one. Okay. So I've put the universal point back in my tool. This is the um, Creative Versatool. Creative Versatool is this one. This is the one that has the temperature control on it. So this is the universal point. So I'm just checking to make sure that it's good and hot, which it is. So that's a good thing. So what I have here on this one is I um, took some Zentangle patterns just getting my tool situated. Okay, 
So I divided this little house up into some strings, which are basically curvy sections. By Zandra, what is the actual wood? Uh, Claus Man's here and he can tell you. I think it's pine, but um, I think that's probably what this is. And then I've just started putting some designs in here. So we're going to do a little bit of this. We won't get the whole thing done today, but we're going to do a little bit of it. So let's do this section in here, for, for example. We'll burn the strings in, and then we'll um, do a little bit of some of the patterning. Uh, it is untreated, and I think it's pine. If uh, Claus Man hears me, he'll answer that. But I'm not sure he's. I'm not sure where he's that he's here where he can. I'm not sure he's where he can hear. I'll get it out in a minute. <laughs> okay, this is the universal point. And so, you don't have to do everything in one go. So yes, the wood is white pine. Okay, so we're going to go over this one. So these were my original strings that I put in, um, or sections, for the Zentangle divisions. I think that's what it's called. I'm not a certified Zentangler. You do want to pull the tool toward you. Don't try and push it away. And if you have a line that is uh, not as thick as it should be, you can go over it again to thicken it a little bit. You just have to remember that this is wood. And wood is not going to react the same way that smooth paper or cardstock is. And as you move the tool across the wood, it is cooling the tool off. Okay, so there are the original sections. And so we're going to work on this one in here a little bit. Okay? Um, so what, and I went ahead and drew them in pencil because um, I'm not as, I'm not so great at making the patterns up on the fly. Some people are really good at that. That's not a real forte of mine. Uh, this this little design, little piece I was playing with here, most of this, like this section right here, this one, I did that without drawing anything in. This one I drew in, this one I drew in, and this one I drew the circles in. Those circles are, you can tell they're wonky, but circles are not so easy to do with a flat tool. But that's okay. It's good practice. It's good exercise and patience. So I'm going to um, just go over my lines. More or less. <laughs> you have to, sometimes the, the tool and the grain of the wood have other ideas about following lines. And you have to be okay with that. How many times have I said that, right? You have to be okay with that. Don't try to control the uncontrollable. Control what you can. Be okay with the 
spontaneous results. Okay, so I've got the initial zigzag for this pattern. I don't even know what this pattern is called. Uh, that is one of the things I am definitely not good at with Zentangle patterns and that is knowing the names of them. So anybody that is a Zentangle person, I'm not even sure that these are bona fide patterns. <laughs> i tell you the truth. I have several books that I put my favorite patterns in um, and I'm never sure whether I really did the bona fide version or if I made it up or I'm sure I didn't make it up I'm sure I just used a variation of some kind so the names of the patterns are not very easy for me to remember but part of that is just the fact that I haven't decided to spend the time remembering memorizing as it were There is a section of the wood right in here that it is just not going to go straight for me. It's just going to have a bend in a straight line. So you're just going to have to be okay with that, Miss Barb. Yes, you are. And I'm going to turn this around and work toward myself. It's a much better idea. Remember that, Barb. Okay, now, so I have those lines done so now I'm going to do the little lines yeah the test block is interesting isn't it Gail <laughs> okay so now we're going to do the small lines and now you have to be careful when you have these little tiny sections I'm going to have to get up on the tip of the tool And sometimes I have to go over one of the lines a second time simply because I don't get the lines to meet. And I'm keep I'm adjusting the temperature of the tool. If it seems to be burning too hot, I'm just going to do all the lines coming this way. If the uh, heat seems to be burning too hot, then I'm turning it down. And I'm gauging that by how warm it is in my hand. Um, it's not too hot to hold for certain. But if it starts to feel like I'm getting too much heat, you know, radiating around from the, from the metal part, radiating around up here onto my fingers, that's what is telling me I'm going to turn it down because it's getting a little too much radiant heat coming down there. It's not quite as easy as drawing these with a felt tip pen. And the ones that um, I would have a lot of difficulty with are the ones that have a lot of curves. And there are a lot of the Zentangle type patterns that um, are very curvy. And those I would, I think I would have a real challenge with, with the wood, because of the grain of the wood. You could switch to another tip, that wouldn't be bad, but um, I think the grain of the wood, unless you use a smoother wood than this, like maybe a birch, 
it's going to be a much greater challenge. Okay, so we've got we've got that so far. Bye, Scooby. Hey, Cheryl. Nice to see you. And now I'm going to come and do the opposite side here. But again, let me caution you that if you have any issues with um, your lungs, your bronchial area, etc., this may not be a good thing for you to be doing. At the very least, you would need to employ the help of a very good mask or respirator. I'm not even totally following my lines. But I have them there and I could follow them if I wanted to. How's that? <laughs> I could do it if I want. I just, I just apparently don't want to. I used to sew a lot of my clothes and um, people were used to asking me, oh, did you sew that? And so my standard answer was no, but I could if I wanted to. Once I started buying more ready-made clothes, <laughs> I could if I wanted to. I could, I could follow these lines if I really wanted to, couldn't I? So if you uh, are so inclined to get out a wood burning tool, I bet you could have some fun with it. Now these have been sanded. You do want the wood to be as smooth as possible. You are going to get some, some skips in your line and that is because of the grain of the wood. So you just can't get to, you can help avoid some, uh, some of that with sanding but you're never going to get rid of all of it okay so there is one of our designs whatever design that name is I don't know I'm going to try and put this one more line in here because I think it needs it let's see if I can do it right on the edge of the wood wish me luck I did it okay good because it needed that. It needed that one more line down there. Right there. Um, I'm not painting it. I'm using the um, Dina Wakely scribble sticks and I'm staining it like we did with this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do another pattern here because I want to show you how you can shade this. We'll see if I can do this, shall we? Um, I need to change the tip and the other tool to get ready for this. So, <laughs> Pardon me while I manage the tools here again. Let me make sure this is cool. Yes, it is. Okay. Give me just a second to change the tip. and turn the other tool back on. The, you do not need to have two tools, but it sure makes it handy when you're doing something like I'm doing to try to keep the flow going here. Okay, so back to this. Um, let's do this section right here. So I have a bunch of curved lines, but they're pretty gentle curves, so I'm gonna be able to, I should be able to do this. Wish me luck now. <laughs> Here we go. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I 
I find that it's nice to turn the wood rather than the tool. I get it. I seem to get a smoother line if I turn the wood. She says as she has a jagged line. Apparently I can't talk and do this particular thing at the same time. Okay, so we got that set of lines in. Uh, the tiny flow tip is going to make circles for sure. Yeah. For sure. And you can even do lines with that um, flow tip. Because I was doing that on some of them last night too. I was working with like this, this is the flow tip just held longer or shorter amounts of time to get the dots and holes. That works like a charm. Uh, but you could get, you can get some lines as well using that tip I found. You know, it's all a matter of practice and personal preference. I think. And a lot of it, I do believe, is the wood. Your choice of wood, how smooth it is, and so forth. Now see this section of the wood right in here, I'm having to go over a second time because the line did not burn very smoothly the first time. Sometimes you have to slow down too. Okay, so we've got kind of a checkerboard thing going on there. Hi Linda. Hi Cindy. Troublemaker Cindy. <laughs> Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to shade with this tip. So I'm going to just start on one of these lines, or one section of the squares, and I'm going to shade using this tip. This, I'm going to lay it flatter against the wood. And again, depending on the grain, this is going to look striped. Well, that's pretty serendipitously cool. So what I'm after is every other square. Yeah, the arty way of the lines, I agree with you. So we're after every other square to be shaded. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to go into this section and this straddles the roof and the body of the house shape. But I'm laying it more to the side so that I get um, much more of the area of the tool burning. Which is pretty cool. Look how, look how that turned out to be striped. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Okay, keep going, Barb. Don't get distracted by the little things. Okay, so we're going to work on this one. Now, when I'm doing these patterns with a pen and a pencil, 
I go through and I mark each one of these with an X that's going to be shaded <laughs> just because I find it for me that works better than it's like oh yeah I know where I'm going we well, can't do that with the wood burning tool so much because if you mess it up you mess it up you got a new pattern Okay, so let's go to the next line. So you can see this goes relatively quickly for this pattern. But I have to say that, you know, I'm not an experienced wood burner by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. And um, so this is a perfectly fine tool for me to decide if I want to invest in, um, a, you know, a more expensive, higher quality tool. The price is right. Okay, moving on down. And sometimes you have to kind of experiment with the tool to figure out how to hold it. And most of your Zentangle patterns, or very lots of them, are shaded. So we're going to shade this one just a little bit because we can alright and so we got one more row here I do love the way that that uh, grain of that wood is impacting the shading. I think that's cool. Okay, so we're done with that. So I'm going to turn this tool off and give it a rest. And I'm going to go to the other one, which has the larger flow point. I put the larger flow point in. Let's see if it's, yeah, it's hot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, in the alternate squares here, I'm just going to put a circle. easiest circles you're ever going to do. Okay, how about that? Pretty cool, huh? Isn't that neat? Ah, no. I, I'm using your tool, Dorothy. Probably so. I probably borrowed it. Forgot to give it back. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go over this just with an eraser because um, I didn't hit all my lines here. Probably be better to use a kneaded eraser, but the white one is what I had, so that's what we're using. If you draw on the wood, you definitely want to draw lightly and uh, so you don't groove the wood and also to deposit very little graphite. Okay, pretty much I got it taken away. So now what we're going to use is umber. 
So this is the umber scribble stick. And what I'm going to do now is in this pattern, I'm going to, these big zigzags that go through here in the area where I have that little bitty section, kind of the underside of each of those zigzags, I'm going to put a little bit of the umber scribble stick. And also this will lighten. So it may look dark to you when you're seeing it on camera, but it will lighten as it dries. So I've added some scribble stick and umber just to complement the wood. You could use a different color. Um, am I going to hang them outside? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know what I'll do with them for sure. Um, and then on this one, I'm just going to go around the edges just a little bit. And I usually don't do any of the shading, honestly, until I'm completely done with a Zentangle type design. Then I'll go back and shade it. I'm doing this for you guys just so you can see what it looks like with the umber shading. Now you could be much more picky about this and you could shade around every one of these little light colored squares and so forth. I'm not going to do that. You're going to have to use your imagination on that one. Have to use your imagination. Okay, back to, this is a Pentel water brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that color down inside that section where I placed it. I'm going to leave the big zigzags um, alone. So this is only activating, pulling the color in the area where I placed it. Because I want, part of what makes Zentangle design so interesting to me is the contrast between light and shadow. So you, you need contrast to get the Zentangle designs to really show up and look interesting. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to shade this. Where I put it, I'm just going to activate the pigment. This again, in case you just got here, is uh, Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks, which is a water-soluble pigment that I decided to try on wood. So you can see it begins to have a little um, ebb and flow and interesting look to the to the design. All right. So I'm going to put the camera back on me. And ask you guys if you have any questions. Be sure and pop them in the chat. I'm going to put my scribble sticks away here while I'm waiting for you guys to ask questions. putting these back in their little in their little house and put the lid on them is it for you or is this kind of magic <laughs> it's magic okay let me get my um, my irons out of the way and then we'll get the sponsors because you know the sponsors let me stream so So we have to let them come out and say hi to everybody, but we don't dare have hot, screaming hot tools on the table. So here is the, here's the one that we did earlier, so you can see it from a distance. So I think I might go back and add a little bit more color around the top of the roof. I kind of like that extra color. Yeah, that would be fun, Sandy. She says, um, one by four made into a growth chart like this. Yeah, that'd be fun. So here's the other one. So you can see it, just so you can see it from a distance. Because sometimes it really helps to see things from a distance. All right, let me, uh, let me remove my, 
my irons here. And then while I'm up, I'll let the sponsors out. So if you take off before the sponsors come out, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I thoroughly enjoy having each and every one of you join me. And we will be back next Friday at the same time, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's when I stream every Friday. I don't know what we're going to do, but it'll be something. So let me move these and get the sponsors. I'll be right back. Yeah, we got to get the sponsor cam for you, don't we? Yes. Thanks, Dorothy. All right. One sponsor. Oh, here comes the other one. He's talking about it. Are you talking about coming up here? Or are you going to do it? Huh? You coming up to see everybody? Okay. He's talking to you guys. He's talking to you guys. Come here. Don't ask me why these cats do this. I have no idea. I have never, ever, ever had a cat. Cats that would do this. Never, never, never. Okay. Sorry. I had a phone call I had to put on hold for a second anyway so here they are these are the sponsors they're the guys that let me stream today they were pretty good you were pretty good weren't you yeah you were <laughs> in case you're having to be new to the channel these are the boys known as the sponsors and uh, they are Charlie and Chance and they uh, are celebrating their fifth anniversary of being here this month. Yeah. So, oh, don't start coughing. No, don't start coughing. I'll have to give you off the table if you're going to do that. Don't start that. <laughs> okay, before we embarrass ourselves, before we embarrass ourselves, we're going to say goodbye. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks for being here, everybody. Remember to get creative today. You know, it's easy. And I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.